Hi there, Dr. Declan Weatherby here for another one of my FBCA crash course uh, training videos. In a previous training video, you learned why functional blood chemistry analysis is the ultimate functional medicine screening test. And today we're going to dive into why normal is not optimal when it comes to analyzing blood test results. So guess what test every one of your patients and clients have probably had done by their medical doctors? Well, you guessed it, a blood test. And guess what 99% of them tell you when they mention this? Oh, I've already had a blood test done and my doctor looked at it and told me everything was normal. Well, one of the things to remember is that the majority of patients who feel unwell will come out normal on a blood test. And clinical experience suggests that these people are by no means normal and are really a far cry from being functionally optimal. They may not yet have progressed to a known disease state, but they are what we call dysfunctional, i.e. their physiological systems are no longer functioning properly and they are starting to feel unwell. So let's take a look at some of the typical functional problems patients present to the clinic with. Fatigue and low energy. Digestive disorders such as bloating, heartburn, constipation, gas, allergies, reduced immunity, infertility, pain and inflammation, muscle aches, stiffness, etc. Thyroid abnormalities, anything from full-blown autoimmune thyroiditis, which is the com most common autoimmune condition on the planet, to the myriad of signs and symptoms associated with a low-functioning thyroid gland. Sex hormone dysfunctions. This could be anything from erectile dysfunction, low libido, menstrual irregularities to struggles going through the menopause. Sleep disturbances, anxiety or depression, skin issues, weight fluctuations, hypertension, and the range of issues associated with cardiovascular system. And finally, cognitive impairment. So these are some of the typical signs and symptoms of a functional disturbance in the body. However, many patients with these symptoms present without clinical findings, i.e. their blood tests, their pathology reports, etc., all appear within, quote, the normal range. Good news, your test indicates that you're in the normal range. Well, this is funny, but it's not that funny if you were one of the people slumped against the wall in your allopathic medicine physician's office, which is the experience of thousands and thousands of people. What we need is to look at these patients through a slightly different lens, a lens that allows us to see what's going on with them, not in terms of disease or pathology, but in terms of dysfunction. It's important to remember that even if modern Western medicine knew what was going on, they really have nothing to give the millions of people suffering from these conditions, unless you count the masking of symptoms with drugs and effective treatment, which I don't. But rather than me telling you about it, let's look at a sample case that clearly demonstrates what I'm talking about. So this is a 39-year-old male presenting to clinic with complaints of low libido, gaining weight, especially around the abdomen, not sleeping well, catches colds every winter, muscle aches and low energy. And so a comprehensive blood panel and CBC was ordered with the hope that it was going to help us evaluate what's going on. So here's a copy of the blood test results. So this is pages one and two. And as you can see on these two pages, we have a list of the biomarkers, the list of the results, whether or not something is out of range is shown with a, a number and then an H or an L, H being high, L being low, and then reference ranges and a lot of other things on the page. So page one and two, we can see that the only value here that is out of range is the total bilirubin is elevated at 1.9. Page three and four, the only thing out of uh, uh, range here is the direct bilirubin, which is 0 0.3, higher than it should be on the normal range. And the last page here, DHEA sulfate is low, but everything else is normal. So let's take a little summary look at the values that were outside of the normal range. 
So there were only three values that were out of range. Total bilirubin was 1.9, that was elevated above the normal. Bilirubin direct was elevated above the normal, and DHEA sulfate was below the normal. That's it. So what does this tell us about this patient's condition? Not very much. So here is a typical monologue that a patient experiences when their pr practitioner, who is not versed in functional blood chemistry analysis, would take a look at this blood work. Well, Mr. X, your blood work looks very good. Your cholesterol and triglycerides look normal, as does the homocysteine. So no cardiovascular issues going on here. Your kidneys look good. Your BUN and creatinine are all normal. Your electrolytes look good. Calcium protein globulin, all within the normal range. Liver enzymes are all normal, so nothing wrong with your liver. However, your total and direct bilirubin are both a little bit elevated. An increase in both of these are associated with your gallbladder. So I'm wondering if you were experiencing any pain or a discomfort, uh, maybe underneath of your right rib cage. And so at this point, they might do a physical exam, or if they're on top of things, order an ultrasound of the gallbladder, but most commonly, it's wait and see. Ah, but your glucose, your insulin, your hemoglobin A1c all look good, as does your thyroid. Testosterone levels are right where they should be uh, for your age. Your DHEA is a little bit low for someone your age. Well, to be honest with you, most allopathic physicians aren't going to be ordering DHEA on their patients. So this likely wouldn't even come up in conversation because it's not on a standard panel. Yeah, the CBC all looks good, no immune issues, no anemia, your iron levels are all where they should be, and the prostate is good. So I repeat, what does this tell us about this patient's condition? Not very much. So this patient who's experiencing real symptoms and real problems has just been told that this blood test is pretty much normal with the exception of elevated bilirubin. You see, the trouble with this approach is that the traditional lab report that you have just seen lacks meaning. It's almost as if it's designed to be deliberately obscure. Long list of names, most of which the patient has never heard of, a long list of numbers, an occasional H or L, the reference range, and then obscure units. Nothing about this provides meaning to the patient. The only meaning imparted to the patient is through the mouth of an allopathically trained physician or PA or nurse's assistant, that type of practitioner. That is about five minutes to spend with the patient. You see, thousands and thousands of these reports are handed to patients every day. Tons and tons of patient data are amassed and codified in these reports. Though these data can guide and direct our personal health journey, most of the meaning suggested by the data is unfortunately lost. You see, the issue is certainly not the lack of data. This test that we just looked at had 67 biomarkers on it, but rather the absence of a tool powerful enough to tease out the meaning entrapped within the numbers. Receiving a lab test result with some handwritten notes written upon it does not extract the full value, the real meaning contained within the data. Now, one of the most common response a patient hears from the physician who is going through the lab with them is, oh, everything looks normal. But you see, there's a big problem with normal. Yes, lab data are tricky. Its meaning is derived from comparing it to normal values. So the very first question we should ask ourselves is how are normal values derived? Well, the majority of conventional standard or quote-unquote normal reference ranges are based on the distribution of a bell curve, which says that 95% of the population are normal. That group that sits right here in the green. 2.5% of the population are going to be above normal, and 25 are going to be below normal. So the normal range in the majority of cases is based on statistics and not whether a certain value represents good health or function. When an allopathic physician reviews a blood test results, their only concern is when a particular result is outside the normal reference range, because values outside of the normal range help them identify and diagnose disease states, tissue change, and pathology. Because they are based on statistics, 
the normal reference values tend to change from year to year, depending on the prevalence of disease in the general population. So as our population becomes more dysfunctional, more obese, suffers from more cardiovascular disease, the normal reference ranges tend to get wider and wider. So this leaves a larger number of the population testing in a range considered normal. Also, normal ranges will vary from state to state. What might be normal in Virginia may be abnormal in California. The problem is normal reference ranges usually represent average populations rather than the optimal levels required to maintain good health. Normal is not the same as optimal. So clearly most normal reference ranges are really too broad to adequately detect health problems before they become pathology and are not useful for detecting dysfunction. What you really want is optimal health as opposed to normal health. So allopathic physicians evaluate blood chemistry tests using ranges that determine pathology. If pathology is not present, the patient is considered healthy. If your numbers are within the normal range, then everything is normal. What I like to do is to look at the functional or optimal range, what we call a physiological optimal. This functional approach to chemistry screens and CBC analysis is oriented around changes in physiology and not pathology. So what we're looking at, this is exactly the same line as the normal. What I'm interested in is what's happening in this gray area here and this gray area here. Results in this gray area tells me that something's not right in the physiological systems associated with this biomarker. So we increase our ability to detect patients with changes in physiological function. We can identify the factors that obstruct this patient from achieving optimal physiological, biochemical, and metabolic functioning in their body. So here's what's missing. What's missing is a tool which gathers lab test data and analyzes it for its hidden meaning. A tool that reveals the subtle web-like patterns hidden within the numbers themselves. A tool that gives you a sense of dysfunction within the many functional systems of the body. And I'll talk about that in a future video. And finally, a tool that offers concrete practical suggestions to correct underlying physiological imbalances. Well, a tool like that does exist, and it's called functional blood chemistry analysis. One of, if not the most effective way to gather functional information from your patients. So that's it today. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to dive into what biomarkers should be used on your comprehensive panels. If you're interested in getting started with functional blood chemistry analysis, you don't have to wait for the rest of this course to get started. You can start your 30-day free trial by going to bloodchemsoftware.com. Until the next time, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Dickon Weatherby. Take care.